Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 10 for February the 3rd, 2019. We're still in Unit 2 entitled, Loving God by Trusting Christ. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled, Eyes on the Prize. Our devotional reading comes out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verses 50 through 58. Uh, background scripture is taken from Philippians chapter 3 verses 1 through 16 and we'll be studying today from uh, the book of Philippians chapter 3 uh, verses 7 through 14. Our key verse reads, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's taken from Philippians chapter 3 uh, verses 13 and 14 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today number one is to explore Paul's stated accomplishments and his purpose for sharing these with the Philippian believers. Secondly, to value your relationship with Christ above all other facets of your identity. And then third, to learn to practice humble detachment from the credentials or accomplishments of which one could boast. And we have three outlines that will be a part of our lesson today. The first outline is entitled, Everything Else is Garbage. The second outline is entitled, Know the Power. And then the third outline is entitled, Pressing On. I certainly thank and praise God for being able to present this lesson to you again, to uh, be back with you in terms of uh, sharing our faith and sharing the gospel with you today. And we hope that you will join uh, the, the, the study today uh, from God's Word. We pray that you would grab your Bible and uh, pen and paper. We're going to give quite a few scriptures today uh, because we have a lot of depth to our lesson today and we want to uh, get right into this. If you have been following us for the last three weeks, uh, we have been uh, in the book of Philippians um, uh, written by the Apostle Paul and we actually started in uh, chapter 1 and so today we are in chapter 3 um, and so we're going to talk about this uh, what plagued the church at this time uh, and I want to give a little bit of biblical context from the um, from our uh, quarterly and then we want to read a little bit from our lesson standard but from our quarterly although Paul kept joy and rejoicing as the central focus of his epistle to the Philippian Christians he did find a compassionate way to warn them about the deceitful tactics um, and misguided doctrine of the Judaizers. You can see that in Philippians chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 4 and then from the uh, lesson standard many circumstances had come together to create disunity uh, in the Philippian church. We can surmise that personal differences and rivalries played a role. Certainly the selfishness to which all people are vulnerable was the fertile ground in which the problem grew. But another factor was the influence of those who advocated that Jewish people have a place of preeminence in the church. Uh, so as in other churches uh, founded by Paul, the Philippian church was troubled by those whom we identify as Judaizers. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and it should be noted that the church at large, the uh, body of Christ, is always plagued by uh, 
other doctrines and, and, and we'll share some things going along uh, to help you understand that we have to be armed with the gospel of Jesus Christ so we can understand uh, what it is that uh, that constitutes salvation and when we hear things that uh, are admixture if you will to the gospel then those things become a threat and, and so uh, it behooves us to to really uh, be rooted and grounded in, in, in God's word because uh, this was an issue um, with the church at Galatian and it's ironic that Paul is warning uh, uh, the Philippian church the believers there about the same tactics that he himself uh, as an unregenerate individual uh, was practicing and so we want to uh, understand that until he met Christ on that Damascus road he too thought that uh, the Judaizers or the Jews had preeminence he thought that uh, he was doing the right thing in terms of persecuting uh, God's people until he met Jesus Christ and uh, the truth the reality of the gospel of Jesus Christ was revealed to him and so now God is using him to warn others and so it's very important that we understand uh, what this lesson constitutes but there are two subtopics if you will that I want to share with you and then we'll get right to our lesson outlines um, that, that, that really strike a note in terms of uh, uh, what Paul is identifying um, and what he uh, values as his path going f uh, forward. The first one is Christ the one goal in life. So all the things Paul formerly valued in the flesh as a natural re uh, religionist uh, were gains in the old regenerate life. He now focuses uh, or reckons total loss, pure liability uh, for the sake of Christ. And then the second thing um, I want to mention is the concentration of spiritual purpose. The concentration of spiritual purpose. The, the apostle's object is Christ. Uh, his purpose is to know uh, Christ uh, experientially uh, in a in a three-way or three-fold way if you will first of all Paul wanted to know the power of Christ's uh, resurrection uh, the victory over sin and death uh, secondly and what is inseparable is the fellowship of his sufferings and uh, 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 in other words the cross uh, and then thirdly um, what follows being like him, being continually molded into uh, the form of Christ's death. Um, so this he will possess uh, the experience of Christ. Paul wanted these things uh, and sometimes uh, as I read this I was thinking about the sufferings or the cross uh, that we don't like to bear. We don't like to uh, uh, undergo sufferings uh, uh, to suit the spirit if you will uh, but these are inseparable to the Christian walk we must go through things as part of our development uh, process as Christians uh, uh, and then uh, foremost to be able to identify uh, with what Christ endured at the uh, at the cross and so uh, these things have been ordained for the believer there is no escape from suffering and so we want to remember that today but our first outline is entitled everything else is garbage um, and this is taken from Philippians chapter 3 uh, verses 7 through 9 and I want to read this from the King James Version uh, the Bible says but what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Verse 9, 
and be found in him not having my own righteousness uh, which is of the law but that which is through faith of Christ uh, the righteousness which is of God by faith so there's a lot to unpack here but but as we said earlier uh, in life in the Christian walk what are your values uh, what are your goals uh, what do you see about yourself what do you want what are you looking for uh, Paul is specific here in identifying uh, uh, himself uh, in this uh, epistle to the Philippian believers that whatever he uh, 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 gained in his temporal life he uh, uh, in comparison to Christ he counted it loss uh, his credentials as a Pharisee and one that had zeal and uh, his credentials as one who surpassed others in terms of his understanding and his his education and and all of these other things that he felt uh, uh, and believed that 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 identified him uh, as a somebody but after he met Christ on that Damascus Road and comparing uh, what he thought he needed to to be identified as as a man and as a church leader uh, uh, he counted these things as loss uh, because Christ was superior uh, the Spirit of the Lord is reminding me now of the book of Hebrews and, and when you study the book of Hebrews the the theme behind that book is uh, Christ superior to all and and that is what Paul is saying here about himself that he has counted everything uh, loss. It doesn't mean anything to him anymore. He he has no value uh, uh, into it anymore like he used to because he's gone after Christ and he's seeking Christ in a way that uh, 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 the value or the emphasis is on the knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ, uh, the depth of the knowledge, the wisdom, uh, the height, the 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 breadth, if you will, of the knowledge of of knowing Christ, and this is what it's all about for us as Christians. We want to know more. We want to learn more. We want to discover uh, through experience, uh, through the reality of faith in Jesus Christ, of what uh, Christ. Uh, personhood is all about and this is where Paul uh, uh, is, is, is signaling to the Philippian church that this is how he feels but he goes on to say uh, uh, I have suffered the loss of all things you know when we come this way uh, and, and I want to introduce another word to you uh, as we talk about this part of the text uh, about sanctification, uh, about being consecrated, uh, about being dedicated, uh, about pulling off the old and putting on the new. And so there has to be in the Christian walk, there must be sacrifices. There must be things that we are willing to part with uh, uh, in our pursuit or in a pursuit to know Christ more so than uh, this this world uh, who the Bible is telling us very clearly that the world is passing away literally uh, before our eyes and so Paul says they mean nothing to him he counts them as dung that uh, I may win Christ that I uh, be found in him not having my own righteousness now this is where the Judaizers uh, uh, have become the threat so if you know anything about them I want you to look at Acts chapter 15 when you have a little time uh, that you can see that issue came up uh, about circumcision and we still have a problem in in the church today in terms of doctrine uh, and we always have to be careful what people are telling us that we need to do in order to obtain salvation this is the 
the concept behind uh, Judaism. It, it's a, a, a self-righteousness. It's a self-worth. It's a, 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 a self uh, achievement, if you will, uh, of uh, some type of work or some type of uh, keeping of the law that you have done to earn something before God. And so we know that is a threat to free grace. So if we look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, I believe in verse 8 and verse 9, so uh, what God has done through us and for us uh, through the cross of Jesus Christ and, and saving us is clearly by grace alone. There was nothing else that you and I could do uh, to save ourselves. But this was the threat at this time. And so these Judaizers were uh, uh, embarking upon shifting the belief system of, of, of the church members uh, here in the text to cause them to give up the free grace that God has has bestowed upon them and then go back to trying to keep the law uh, as a means of justification but Paul makes it clear here he said but that which is through faith this is how we are saved it's through faith uh, uh, of Christ the righteousness or the right standing or, uh, or the uh, uh, justification if you will which is of God by faith. We cannot be justified before God without having faith. What does uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tell us? That he who comes to God must first believe that he is and then that he is a rewarder unto them that diligently seek him. So we have to be careful about uh, what we think uh, God will accept. So if if we accept the legal principle uh, of these Judaizers or anyone else who is telling us that we need to establish ourselves uh, 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 by some type of work, then I would ask you then what was the purpose of the cross? Do we nullify the grace or the cross of Christ uh, for the sake of something that we could have done? You can see the foolishness uh, in that argument that would mean that Christ died needlessly. So we reference Paul's uh, uh, conversion uh, from Acts chapter uh, uh, 8 verses 1 through 3. Uh, but here uh, Paul, uh, uh, what he once counted as assets were now liabilities. Can we say that about our walk with Christ that we have uh, discovered there are some things that we need to uh, move out of the way that don't mean anything to us uh, uh, and, and I want you to understand where Paul's mind is his the scripture is clear it says our citizenship is in heaven Paul's attitude and his mindset is not on earth it's in heaven he wants to be he wants to obtain what Christ wanted for him what Christ has prepared for him and so he forgot about uh, it, 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 the Spirit of the Lord is reminding me again about the the patriots uh, 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 in Hebrews chapter 11 about how they all died in faith not receiving the promise they were looking ahead they died in faith they died expecting God to fulfill his promises to them. They lived that way and they died that way. And so that is what Paul is saying here. He wants to be found uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this shape or in this posture, if you will. And this is spiritual. I want you to understand this is spiritual. So uh, it goes on to ask the question here, considering times when you intentionally accepted a short-term loss to achieve a long-term gain, how would you compare and contrast your sacrifices with those uh, expected of Christians? Some things just uh, uh, as we think about the short term, and, and, and this life is like that. Uh, we 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 obtain things in this life, but here's the thing: we take nothing. We take nothing out of this world. All of the the hustle and the bustle of of this life to 
to to to to uh, gain some short-term benefits but they don't contribute to the long-term objective uh, and so we as Christians need to prioritize and we need to count up the cost uh, uh, does it matter uh, that we obtain all of this world's riches and then forfeit knowing Christ in the pardon of our sins do we want to stay in four foot of water or do we want to launch out into the deep what do we want uh, what are we looking for uh, but the scripture is clear he that hunger and thirst after righteousness the Bible says he shall be filled so we want to keep those things in mind and then the second outline um, is entitled know the power and this comes from Philippians chapter 3 verses 10 uh, and 11 and then verse 10 says uh, from the King James Version Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made uh, conformable unto his death verse 11 if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead let's unpack this that I may know him what is Paul saying that I may intimately know him that I may be in this this type of relationship uh, with Christ that I know him that I understand him that I am uh, well acquainted uh, with him that I I, I fully understand uh, and uh, comma and the power of his resurrection so this is where this experience comes in in terms of our past life versus the life that we live now uh, 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 who is it I believe John asked this question that has overcome this world he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God how do we know that Jesus is real how do we know that he rose from the dead what experiences do we have and I just want to arm you with this fact uh, when you are confronted with Judaizers or whomever may be talking to you about something that you need to do in terms of earning something, what has your experience been like? This is the question that I raise today. I have experience with God that tells me I am on the right path. My faith has led me to uh, uh, receive the power of the Holy Ghost. My faith has led me to understand, to have a, a witness, not on just externally, but internally. I know him down on the inside. I can see the changes in my life. And so this is the power that we are acquainted with and we know that if we are experiencing that power we know Christ rose that God raised him from the dead which is central to what we have to believe from Romans chapter 10 to become a believer in the first place so this is where Paul is going with this I want to know him I want to uh, know his power and then I want to be acquainted with him and the fellowship of his sufferings. We want to just touch on this for a minute because if we're going to be intimately acquainted with Christ, we're going to know him, we're going to experience his power. We also have to uh, 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 conclude then there are some sufferings that we're going to have to share in. Uh, uh, and so that need not alarm us, it's just a part of what Christ wants us to experience when you go through things and and if you don't mind I'm talking to myself now when we go through things what does that tell us about uh, 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 our walk with Christ when we experience suffering as a Christian when we are persecuted when we are lied on when we are talked about when we are criticized when when we when we when we go through all of these things what are you learning about your walk with Christ and this is something that I found interesting and I want to share this with you very quickly if we can go over to 2nd Corinthians I believe chapter 1 and I, I, I love to read this uh, uh, and share this with 
uh, those that I'm preaching and teaching to so we can understand and this is the same uh, 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 writing uh, of the Apostle Paul uh, but to the church at Corinth but Paul wanted to share with them uh, about what he was going through and the purpose of it this is taken from 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 and I want you to go down to verse 8 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 uh, go down to verse 8 the Bible says that Paul's talking here he said we do not want you to be ignorant brethren of our trouble which came to us in Asia that we were burdened beyond measure above strength so that we despaired even of life yes we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead who delivered us from so great a death and who does deliver us and in whom we uh, trust that he will still deliver us what am I saying here? Paul has learned something here that his trial, his trials that he was experiencing in Asia at the time was uh, part of a learning process and you can uh, uh, parallel this passage to uh, uh, Acts chapter 20 but Paul had some some hardship he had some persecution he had some illness or injury that he suffered since he last saw his readers so these hardships would have occurred either in Ephesus or between Ephesus and Macedonia uh, although they are not mentioned in the summary statement of Acts chapter uh, 20 uh, verse 1 but Paul is saying here the trial was so bad that Paul was convinced that God had decided that it was time for him to die. But God's purpose for our afflictions is to drive us to this conclusion that Paul had that you can't trust yourself. So I... I if we think about Jesus and we'll move go back to our text and I want you to read Hebrews chapter 5 and I want you to read what the writer over there in Hebrews says about Jesus suffering what he was doing how he was offering up tears and prayers and to the one who was able to save him from death I want you to read that and pay attention to the fact that Christ himself even went to the Garden of Gethsemane and asked the Father three times that this cup pass from him. How many times have you asked God to let this cup of whatever it is that was in that cup that you were going through? How many times have you asked God to let that cup pass from you? you didn't want to go through that you didn't want to drink from that cup of affliction anymore but God let you keep the cup and and God let you continue to go through what you were going through and though you have come out of that situation and perhaps you may still be in that situation but I want you to know that God has the capacity to make us through what we go through and that's all Paul is saying here and he was not ashamed of what Paul was not ashamed of what he was going through he embraced it he embraced what he was looking for he wanted uh, such a he had such a de desire for Christ he didn't just want the good from knowing Christ he also wanted to accept the bad he didn't just accept the praise that would come from him being who he was. And keep in mind, Paul is in prison at this time of the writing here in, in the book of Philippians in Roman prison. So he's writing from jail to encourage people who are free, who are not in bondage. He's warning them from jail. And he has embraced his circumstances and he has welcomed the good and the bad even to the fact that 
he wants to realize the resurrection from the dead. This is powerful. This is some kind of of uh, of affection that Paul has that is without wavering. It is without doubt. It is without compromise. He is sure, he is confident that his pursuit would land him into being in the very presence of God, even attaining the resurrection from the dead. I hope we can grasp this today. But Paul already knew Christ but he wanted to know him better. This is a part of the sanctification process. Once we are justified through our faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit creates a yearning within us to know more about our Savior. I want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 uh, through 3. So the Greek word for know used in verse 10 is gnosko. It is similar to but different from gnosis, the root word of Gnosticism. So while uh, Gnosis is knowledge based upon specific fact, Gnosko comes from direct revelation. I want you to look at Galatians chapter 1, I believe verse 18 and 19, Paul talks about uh, uh, that what he understood in his position and his rank was actually by means of revelation. God revealed to him uh, who he was. And so Paul has embraced this to the full in this lesson today. So what Paul was saying, he wanted to get closer to Christ through the indwelling work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, just like John, you can see 1 John chapter 3 uh, verse 2, Paul was anxiously looking forward to seeing Jesus face to face. And that's what th this is what this is all about. If I could just see my Savior face to face, that would be a sight. And this, this is what makes all of what we have to go through, all of the, the tears and the aches and the pain and the anguish and all of the things. And I'm not saying or minimizing the Christian life uh, by any means, but, but it is a sweet way, but it is a trying way. It is a beautiful walk, but it brings turbulence sometimes. But nevertheless, we don't want to jump ship, right? So this is what Paul is saying here. His goal is not the things of the world. His goal is to see his Savior face to face. So Paul was recognizing uh, these facts uh, that the key to knowing Christ was to appreciate and understand the power of his resurrection. This is beautiful. The power of Christ's resurrection works in all three dimensions. And I want you to, to get this. In the past, his resurrection redeemed us from our sins and the power of sin uh, and death. I want you to see John chapter 5 verse 24. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. Currently those who have faith in Christ grow through the sanctification process because of the power of the resurrection. I want you to look at Romans chapter 6 verses 3 and 4. Also Ephesians chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. And finally in the future we will experience the power of resurrection for ourselves or the transformation of our bodies when Christ returns. I want you to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 and also Philippians chapter 3 uh, verse 21. So Paul was looking forward to personally experiencing the resurrection from the dead. I would submit to you today that the Apostle Paul was not afraid to die. He was not afraid he was not afraid of imprisonment that would ultimately lead to his death. He already considered his life nothing unless Christ was in it. He already considered and embraced the fact. If you remember back over in um, uh, Acts chapter nine at Paul's conversion, uh, Jesus 
made it clear to Ananias that he was going to show Paul, Saul, all that he had to suffer for his name's sake. So I believe over the course of time, Paul knew the Holy Spirit kept nothing back from him, even when he was warning the Ephesian elders. Uh, I believe back over in Acts chapter 20, he said that the Spirit explicitly said that when I get back to Jerusalem, that bonds and chains await me. God will tell you, will alert you to trouble and not get you out of it the way that you would like for him to. He will warn you. And so Paul was warned that he was going to prison and he was warned that he had to suffer. He was alerted to the fact that he had fought a good fight and he had finished his course. He said that while he was still living, but he knew he had come to the end of his term as a developer or a founder of all of these churches. And he passed on his responsibilities to a young Timothy. But what I'm saying to you is that this man had profound insight into what he was looking for and who was the source of what he was looking for. He had no misgivings. Years ago, they had this saying um, in the church. You would hear the saints say that they were wearing this world as a loose garment. And that's what the Apostle Paul has uh, uh, come in life to understand. He is wearing the world as a loose garment. He is ready to pull it off and embrace what God would have for him. I hope you can understand that today. This is beautiful. The question is asked here in the quarterly, what are some traits and practices that all Christians should develop? For the sake of time, I just want you to look at uh, Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 22 through 26. And so finally, our last outline is entitled, Pressing On. This is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And again from the King James Version. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I, which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this, thing, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So the high calling is heaven. The high calling is to be in uh, face to face with Jesus Christ. And Paul was sharing here that he had, he had not obtained this yet, but that's what he was looking for. Uh, he knew uh, that, that, that Jesus Christ uh, wanted and came to give eternal life to all of those. That was the promise. That's what uh, Jesus Christ promised was eternal life. And so Paul welcomed that and embraced that. Uh, the fact that he would rather uh, be with the Lord than to be in this life. But Paul would face opposition internally and externally that is why he had to keep pressing toward his goal and I want to encourage you today I don't know what you're facing whether it's external or internal but I want you to keep pressing again I'm speaking to myself and encouraging myself and I also want you to read 2nd Timothy chapter 3 verses 12 and 13 and then I uh, also want you to look at St. John chapter 17, um, verse 24, so you can see what Christ wanted for the believers. And I think you will get some insight from there what the Apostle Paul um, 
was saying that he also was looking for. So Paul uh, then emphasized his approach to the rest of his time on earth. He was going to forget his past life. He was misguided in, uh, by his trust in the law and the Jewish tradition of the elders. Now he was going to give every ounce of his strength in this race. What was the prize Paul was pressing to receive? So we can see it was Jesus. It was through Jesus. God called believers at least twice. He first called all people out of the darkness of sin into the light of salvation through the redemptive work of his son on the cross. Then he calls people into service through the indwelling presence and power of the Holy Spirit. So this is not a call to become uh, a Red Hot Bench member uh, as stated here. Instead it is a call to serve in a particular area of ministry that results in the lost being saved and saved uh, 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 the saved being strengthened to continue pressing on. What a beautiful lesson today. But I want to share this question here. Considering the kinds of accomplishments people include in their resumes based on today's lesson, what might be God's opinion of these achievements uh, and honors? How can we practice humble objectivity with respect to these accomplishments? I want you to look at the third epistle of John verses 1 through 4. And God welcomes and applauds and encourages and opens doors for us to be successful in many ways and in many capacities. But by all means, those things should not be the central of who we are and whose we are. We must always remember that we are the people of God. And God's ultimate goal, as Jesus said to his own disciples in John chapter 14, that he was going away to prepare a place for them. And if he went away to prepare a place for them, he would come again and receive them unto himself. So I hope, trust, and pray that you have been encouraged by this lesson today. I certainly have, and I certainly have enjoyed uh, just talking about and looking at the Apostle Paul's mindset as it relates to what he was going through at the time of this writing. He was in prison. He was on trial. He was going through all manner of hardship. But look at his focus. It was to see his Savior face to face. Our closing prayer, wonderful Lord, we look to you as both the starting gun and the finishing tape of our Christian journey. We ask you for the strength to persevere to the end. And then we thank you in advance for your preservation and restoration in our lives. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So until such time that we will, uh, the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.